欢迎大家出。Welcome to the press briefing today. The doctors today are Dr. Joshua Kwan, head of communicable disease branch of the CHP, and Dr. Gladys Kwan, chief manager of the HA. The doctors will give an update about the HA situation and the daily、uh, tally. Doctor Kwan, please. Good afternoon. There are two thousand five hundred. Uh, 2,500 uh, confirmed patients in hospitals. Among them, 235 are new, newly confirmed patients. For those in isolation facilities, 451 are being treated in isolation wards. 132 patients are being treated in second tier wards. 492 are undergoing treatments in the no North、uh, Lantau Hong Kong Infection Control Centre. 194 patients are in AWE. 145 patients are newly confirmed patients. Yesterday, we reported 10 uh, patients in critical conditions,、uh, seven in serious condition. Among the inpatients, 56 are critical and 49 are serious. Among them, 20 critical patients are in ICU. So we would like to report、uh, one critical case today. That is a two-year-old、um, child, a boy, with no,、uh, with no medical history. He、um, lives with his parents. On the 30th of August, he was、um, given one dose of vaccination. On the, on the 18th of September, he、um, had a fever. On the 19th, his RIT、uh, returned positive. He began displaying upper respiratory symptoms, including cough and、um, a runny nose, with a high fever. His parents brought him to our designated clinic. The doctor considered his clinical condition unstable and referred him to the、um, emergency、uh, A&E. So、uh, he began to display、um, seizures. And he was sent to our pediatric ICU department. He's now relying on、um, e uh, breathing equipment and、um, and uh, drugs uh, to maintain his vital signs.、Uh, he's、uh, in a serious condition. He um, has um, a cerebral、um, edema, so we suspect、uh, the condition to be an acute、um, brain condition. We have prescribed him with antiviral drugs and. Other supporting treatments. So we will continue with all the、um, measures to、um, help him, and we will continue to、um, support his family. Now we would like to appeal to、um, the public. Since、uh, the beginning of this year, more than one hundred, more than eleven hundred thousand children under twelve、uh, um, have been infected. Nine children have passed away. So this is、um, something that we definitely not want to see. At the peak, we have record we had、um, 160 um, pediatric patients in hospital with、uh, more than 20 in critical or serious condition. For children, their、um, anti-epidemic awareness and um, um, immunity is lower, and the risk is higher. Vaccination is the most effective tool to protect children against the virus. That's why we. Once again, appeal to parents to get your children vaccinated. It will prevent acute complication, serious condition, or even death, and also、um, long COVID、um, after infection. Please get your children vaccinated as soon as possible to boost their defense against the epidemic. Concerning death,、um, we have reported seven、uh, new、um, deaths, including three. Sorry,、uh, four males and three females, aged between 43 and 92 years of age. Among them, six were not fully vaccinated with、uh, three doses. So I mentioned、um, a rather young、uh, deceased patient that was、um, a care home resident. Because of the outbreak, the patient was sent to the AWE for isolation. Rather quarantine, and that,、um, afterwards, subsequently, the patient was confirmed. The patient uh, had um, a, a genetic disease which um,、uh, require um, personal care, 
and the patient was uh, bedridden. The situation turned for the worse, and um, the patient uh, got a um, lung complication, and uh, the patient passed away yesterday. The patient was not vaccinated. So for the majority of the deceased patients um, being reported today, most of them did not receive any vaccination. It may be due to um, various reasons. Still, we once again appeal to the public, if you have not completed the uh, vaccination course, please make haste and um, get vaccinated to protect yourself and your family members. 306, uh, 366 patients have recovered, including 331 patients discharged. Nine patients were tested positive on um, admission screening. 15 patients in the same ward were classified as close contacts. For our staff, another 101 um, hospital authority staff members um, are infected, and 70 colleagues have returned to their positions. I would like to make an announcement. Uh, the um, mental, um, the um, at the Castle Peak Hospital uh, in the male ward, um, a nurse uh, was tested positive uh, on the um, 20th. The hospital has arranged um, thorough uh, testing for uh, all the patients. Three other male patients are now um, confirmed to be positive. Twelve patients in the same ward are listed as close contacts and are undergoing quarantine. The situation is stable. The ward has ceased taking in new patients and also um, uh, stopped uh, visiting arrangements. Disinfection has been uh, carried out. Thank you. Dr. Zhuang, good afternoon. Yesterday, uh, we reported 5,459 new cases locally, including 1,348 PCR test positives and 4,111 uh, RAT positives. And we had 135 uh, imported cases, including 119 uh, PCR and 16 RAT positives. Among the 135 uh, imported cases, 66 were caught at the airport. And also at a quarantine center and quarantine hotel, uh, 26 cases were found. At uh, community quarantine, um, community testing uh, centers uh, between the uh, fourth, fourth and the seventh day, there were 43 cases. For uh, um, the eighth and eighth to the tenth day, um, no new cases have been found. The 135 cases are from 38 places, with five places having imported more than 10 cases, including the UK 17, Philipp the Philippines and Thailand and 15, the US 12 and Indonesia 12. For the remaining 33 places, um, 10 or less cases have been imported. Dr. Guan mentioned um, we have reported seven deaths today. In the fifth wave, the total number is uh, 9,695. In terms of care homes, I mean um, yesterday, six residential care homes for the elderly people and four uh, residential care homes uh, for people with disabilities have reported 12 um, residents infected. 55 residents um, are undergoing quarantine. For schools, today is Tuesday. We have uh, 589 schools reporting 1,007 cases involving 878 um, students and 129 teaching staff. The 1,007 cases are from 138 uh, kindergartens and uh, child care centers, 224 uh, primary schools, 211 uh, secondary schools, and 16 special schools. So the 366 schools um, have uh, reported more than two cases in the past seven days. We have, um, I mean, uh, yesterday afternoon and this morning, we have advised 28 schools to uh, cease um, in-person uh, classes for one week for 32 classes, including 12 kindergartens and uh, child care centers, six primary schools, eight secondary schools, and three special schools. Previously, four schools were advised to suspend for one week. So um, one class um, is reporting outbreak um, for each school. So they include uh, two kindergartens, one primary school, and one secondary school. In terms of um, subvariants, so L so for um, L four five two R on the nineteenth, so um, has reached eighty six point two percent. 
And if we look at the community levels, BA 0.5 percentage is around 79.6. So that's close to 80 percent. BA 2.2 is 11.5 percent. BA 0.4 is 6.6 percent. BA 0.12.1 is 2.3 percent. That's all I have to report today. We now move on to the Q&A session. Please use the microphone. I'll start hands over to you and please identify your media organization before you speak. Thank you. Good afternoon from Ming Pao. I'd like to ask about the two year old who is in critical condition. How bad are his seizures? Do you have the CT value of the PCR test? Are his family members infected as well? Do you know where his source of infection comes from? I also like to ask about the 43 year old death. Is he a male or female? Do you have more information on the outbreak of the elderly home he lives in? And as of today, how many people for, or how many staff of the HA cannot report to work due to COVID? Would you um, consider actually uh, relaxing some of the measures for the hospital staff because uh, some doctors have suggested that they can return to work by wearing high protective masks. So would you consider going back to phase two of the hospital beds deployment plan? And how do you define which wave of the pandemic we are in right now because we are now moving on to new variants. So uh, why are we still in the fifth wave or are we, we already in the sixth wave? How do you assess that? Let me first take uh, part some of the questions. We are still in the fifth wave and you can see that the numbers are coming down gradually and we hope to see this trend continue. As regards to the two-year-old, he was suffering from upper respiratory symptoms when he was admitted into hospital, but he was not feeling too well and was not too conscious um, after admission. So some medication had to be used to help with his seizure. He also had breathing difficulties. Therefore, the ICU uh, took him in and helped him with his uh, breathing by providing him with uh, support. The CT value was 18.1 uh, on his PCR. That means that the viral load is very high. The 43-year-old who passed away was a female patient. She lived in an elderly home in Tun Moon. I do not have a lot of information on the outbreak of the elderly home at this moment. The uh, For close contacts of hospital staff, today we have about uh, 662 close contacts of confirmed uh, COVID patients. So you can see that the number of close contacts of HA staff have also been dropping. We are now looking into whether there is room to relax measures in the work environment, such as uh, providing more protective equipment for them. As we mentioned yesterday, we continue to review the figures on the capacity of beds, admission figures, confirmed staff numbers, etc. We know that there are still some needs for non-COVID patients and we continue to adjust our services. We continue to observe the upcoming situation before we move on to other deployment plans. Thank you. The gentleman over there. Hello from AM730. Well, we see there's been a drop in the confirmed numbers. Is there a possibility to further relax social distancing measures? 
there are 28 schools with 32 classes that have to be suspended for a week. Can you tell us more about that? Yesterday, Professor Yun Kok Yong, together with some other experts, suggested that uh, we should uh, triage vaccinated and unvaccinated COVID patients. So would you actually consider doing that in your admission of patients? I'll also like to ask whether the two-year-old family members are also infected. Oh, currently, um, those who the part Hong Kong do do not actually have to go through temperature control. So is there a reason for that? Do you need to strengthen up the measures for that? Uh, out of the 29 schools, 32 classes have to be suspended. And there are three schools with two classes that have to be suspended for one week. So they are not concentrated in just one or two schools. The pandemic seems to be slowing down, and the government is continue its monitoring on the trend to see whether measures could be relaxed. Uh, to provide more information on the two-year-old, we know that the family members conduct RATs every day. At this moment, the family members are not infected and they do not have any symptoms. Uh, we have heard views from many experts. However, uh, many arrangements need to be made to ensure a smooth flow of admission procedures. When the numbers start dropping, we can consider adjusting services for non-COVID patients and to resume normal operations as soon as possible. Uh, we continue our discussions every day, and of course, we would be happy to listen to views from experts, but it also depends on our internal situation. As there are no other questions, we conclude our briefing today. Thank you.